Your terrace is dead. Your terrace is dead. Your terrace is dead. Sydney forever. Your terrace is dead. What is going on guys? This is Josh here and today I am here to talk about the Melbourne victory sanctions over the Christmas Derby incident and they are, they are a bit fucking brutal. They probably could have been worse but they are some pretty brutal sanctions uh, for all Melbourne victory fans and that's the unfortunate side but I'm going to get, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on them after I actually just say what they are. So today, or it'll be yesterday by the time I upload this, but the FFA have decided after handing out lengthy bans to a lot of individuals over the incident, they have decided to punish Melbourne Victory and all of their fans with a huge list of sanctions, including financial sanctions, which are $450,000 to reimburse Melbourne City at Amy Park, $150,000 to Football Australia to go directly to Graham fucking Arnold for his World Cup run, I hope, um, and $50,000 towards, towards the replay of the match. And that also, well, that doesn't include, um, but there is a $100,000 suspended fine, I'm assuming for any similar incidents to the one we saw um, in the next three seasons. So... Yeah, those are the financial fines, but the sporting sanctions are a lot more brutal. Firstly, no active areas at any venue for the north or south end for the rest of the season, which apparently equates to $100,000 lost revenue, which, you know, explains why the APL aren't listening to active supporter groups when it comes to this fucking grand final thing. They only bring in 100000 a season, and victory's one of the biggest, like... Holy shit. Active support brings in fucking nothing. Although, as we know, you know, it makes the game better. It's half the reason people want to go. So, I mean, you kind of need active support. But, yeah. And, and I'm assuming that $100,000 is just ticket sales. Like, it's not um, like a, you know, holistic calculation of like, if Sally doesn't want to go because there's no active support now, etc., etc. Why the fuck would it? Um, then the first, th these are a bit weird because it's like, they're really just hammering home these, um, these points. So there's no active areas at any venue in the regular season or finals for the North or South end for the rest of the season. The first three rows of both ends at Amy Park will be tarped. And rows A to J of Bay 38 will remain empty for the rest of the season. Which is, I'm assuming, the middle... Like, it's it's the main OSM Bay. Um, so, that's like three bands on top of one another. Just to make sure no Melbourne Victory fans get in. Um, they made it nice and clear. Um, tickets will be refunded or moved. That's also in the articles that have come out. So I just thought I'd include that. Uh, no allocated seating at away games for the rest of their season. And fans who, you know, still want to go will have to contact the fucking clubs, which will in turn just send them to fucking Ticket Tech probably. So, um, that's, that's brutal really. Like if there's any Melbourne Victory fans who, um, who are going to an away game and have to, you know, Contact Ticketek. Unlucky. Enjoy being, you know, held up by a robot for fucking hours or whatever Ticketek do. I don't know. Either way, uh, the point is, yeah, there's no allocated seating for away games for the rest of the season. No flags, megaphones, and drums for the rest of the season. And here, here is the absolute kicker. An automatic 10-point deduction every time a match is ended or on-field personnel are assaulted by or because of Melbourne Victory fans. And there's every fucking time, apparently, till the end of the 25-26 season. Which, look, it shouldn't happen, but Melbourne Victory fans, you're gay if you don't do it again. Guys, come on. I think I can, I can trick them into doing it. Just say that their mates will think they are homosexual and they'll be dumb enough to do it. They're fucking idiots. Um, anyway, those, those are the sanctions. And apparently OSM's done as well. I saw that on social media, that original style Melbourne is finished, which 
isn't a surprise to me. Um, they were a very new group, never really had any success as a home end or active support. Um, it was all really just a trend and, you know, it's kind of expected. It did end a bit earlier than I would have thought, but, you know, it was just inevitable because if this band didn't come, they, they would have disbanded anyway because they're fucking shit. They're, they're a trend. Fucking pathetic. Um, no, but seriously, like... Let's get into the actual thoughts on this because like I have been ha 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 suck shit victory and it kind of is like that but really this is a bad situation and I know that the people that did the thing probably aren't too fussed about oh the active is going to be closed that was probably their one fucking game of the season or you know something dumb like I just I really feel like if you can do something that stupid you won't have any remorse for your fellow fans or for anyone um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty dumb to punish like all Melbourne victory fans, all active fans who, you know, didn't have anything to do with that or did not encourage that sort of behavior. It's, it's quite harsh, but, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's necessary or not, to be honest. I just think that it's probably not a good precedent to set to, uh, punish fans en masse for the behavior of a few fans because, you know, I think a lot of fan bases in the future, if this is precedent, will um, will be getting, you know, some, some bans. Probably not as heavy as this because I don't think anyone's quite as dumb as OSM and Melbourne Victory fans. But, um, you know, it, it, these, these, like, sanctions and the city ones too for throwing a flare on the field. Like, the sanctions are really fucking dumb. Because this obviously hasn't happened before and they're playing it up because this incident got media attention. Like, the Flares went on the field at Sydney Games this season, I think. I'd, I'd be amazed if they hadn't. I'm pretty sure some Flares have gotten onto the field. Do we, do we get a fucking two-game ban or whatever? Um, no, because, like, we shouldn't. Shit happens. It's not like they were thrown as projectiles. Um, but it's it's just a really... I don't know, I'm not even going to say dangerous, but just a really kind of potentially relevant precedent to be setting for the A-League to, you know, be blanket banning active support like this. Like, I was all for lifetime bans. I think the incident was really stupid um, and, you know, disruptive to football in this country. Like, it set football back a lot. And I think that there should be harsh punishments, but I don't think that they should be put on people who had nothing to do with it. Like... I mean, yeah, I don't know. If a small group of fans at a, at my club, like, did something that stupid, yeah, I, I would feel very hard done by to be punished by it, is the point that I'm making. Um, and the other thing that I saw was, um, what's it called? That the FA are, like, reviewing their policing systems. Like, I, I can't remember the exact uh, thing that they showed or said, um, but I was reading through like what was said in the press conference and they spoke about uh, reviewing their systems of like security at stadiums, policing at stadiums, supporters, marshals. And I just, I don't like that because like reviewing the systems, it probably just means making them harsher. Like what, what are you going to find? Are you going to find that a more hands-off pro approach might be, you know, a uh, good thing to do? Of course not. Of course, that's not what they're going to find. They're going to find that, no, over-policing is necessary. When, you know, most of the time, it fucking isn't. Um, so, yeah, that's that's another thought from this. But really, I just wanted to uh, make a video because I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, I've been burnt over the holidays by the sun and by football. I mean, I've, I've had a terrible fucking holiday when it comes to um, skincare. I, I'll show you my arm. It is fucking wretched. I don't know if that's getting picked up too well, but like I've got that. Look at that there. That's fucking gross. Um, I got that over the holidays. And also, just like, I think Liverpool won one game and Sydney won one game. And I mean, the Sydney atmospheres have all been really depressing because the atmosphere around the league is just fucked at the moment. Like, not just, you know, the in, in terms of like, oh, noise made in the stadium, but also like, um, just the vibe is very fucking detached and depressing. Um, which, you know, I don't know if I could actually handle a good... A-League vibe at the moment, because it is all just so fucked, but, um, yeah, it's, it's all just really feeding into one big pot of negative energy, and it sucks, um, which is why this situation's good, because 
look, I don't think it's good or fair or something that I want to see in this world um, where, you know, a few people do something and many people get punished for it. That's, that's not something I want to see. But at the same time, it's hilarious to see Melbourne victory crumbling. We get to sing, your terrace is dead. Your terrace is dead. Sydney forever. Your terrace is dead. As we dig our own graves next to it. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's it, right? What else is there? Yeah, Melbourne Victory Punished um, is funny. Uh, that. Oh, yeah, you can also sing The Line Has Been Crossed. The Line Has Been Crossed. Melbourne Victory. The Line Has Been Crossed. No, stick stick with the OG. Um, that, that, that was a fun six months of Melbourne Victory. Actually, it was two years, but um, when they really sucked, it was like a fun six months. Um, and they're continuing to suck on field. And, you know, now they're getting fucked off field too. Um, I know this wasn't like the most, you know, holistic approach to like viewing this, um, where like I could have looked at both angles and really broken down the pros and cons, but, um, I'm a bit hammered. I'm getting ready to watch the Perth versus Brisbane game. Thus the entire bottle is in my hand. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the Melbourne victory bands and shit, because, it's kind of funny, but there's also the little, like, seriousness to it that, like, this is a dodgy precedent. That's probably the best way I can sum it up. But, yeah, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time, and bye-bye.